Hello there, in today's video you join me at the beach where I'm going to attempt to make some really beautiful yet simple long exposures. Come with me today, see what we can capture, show you a few things and yeah, I think it's going to be a good day. Let's go! Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Right, so I'm set up for my first shot and I'm literally only about 100 yards from the car park and I'm stood in this runoff from a stream that comes out of a wood way behind you and it runs into the sea. But what it's bringing with it is probably some sort of muddy deposit, which is creating some fascinating shapes in this water. Now, this is a torrent sometimes, but today, because we've not had much rain, it's actually not too bad to actually stand in, uh, which I'm doing right now. My tripod has sunk well into the sand, but that's keeping it nice and stable. But the shapes it's creating on the ground in front of me are really quite fascinating. And they're just providing lovely lines and interesting shapes in the foreground that's then just leading up to a very simple sky but it's got that lovely blue tinge to it there is essentially a sea fret coming in off the sea which is generating or creating like a mist but then above that there's a little bit of detail in the sky I'm not quite sure if i've got that in the frame but it's most definitely there and it's just feeling very blue However, the image is going to be balanced out a little bit because the sun is just trying to poke through the clouds behind me. That's casting a lovely warm light across this sand, generating some interesting colour. So it's a really straightforward image, but there are a couple of little technical issues that I'm having to overcome. Besides the fact that my tripod is sunk, that's not actually causing me any problems because, well, it's cemented in there now pretty much but what i am dealing with is the reflection of this water so i have my filters in here and i've set the circular polarizer to take the maximum amount of glare off the surface of the sand because there's so much water but i want to see through that glare to that sort of dark black mud or whatever, coal dust or whatever it is i'm not quite sure so I've just rolled it in like this and you can see what a difference it's actually making. And by dialing that in, I think it's gonna work really well to get through that glare and see that detail. I'm going for an eight by 10 crop because I just think that fits the shape of the runoff. I don't wanna get any of this dry sand in over to my left there. So it's just kind of that field of view that I have. I've decided I want to exclude the bits of dry sand and I'm doing that by cropping. I then have my six stop filter in there, which is giving me uh, an exposure time of four seconds at ISO 100 and F11. And all that's doing is just removing a little bit of this detail from the movement of the water and just creating that slightly ethereal feel, the same with the waves in the distance. And yeah, I mean, I think that's looking pretty good. Lovely detail in that water and that sand. So two second timer, move this one out of the way. Keep still so I don't move the tripod. Have a look at that. Yeah, some really interesting lines in there. Lovely light from that sun behind me hitting that sand. Blue in the sky, but a little bit of misty detail in the cloud, which I think is really nice. It's going to work really well. I'm happy with that with my, or for my first shot of the day. Right, I'm set up for another shot and I'm absolutely on a time limit with this one because the tide is coming in and my subject are these three rocks here. They just form a fantastic foreground to this image that then goes up into that beautiful sort of misty blue sky. The benefit of this shot though is I've just got the sun still peeking over those trees there, lighting up those rocks every now and again. It's just gone behind a cloud at the moment, but when 
that warm sun it catches those beautiful rocks. It's just looking fantastic. My feet are getting pretty wet now, but I don't mind. So I've got, as you can see, I can get down. Again, I'm using the circular polarizer to take some of that sheen off the water again, and a little bit off the rock. Whoa! <laughs> A little bit off the rock as well. And I've got the six stop filtering as well, just to give it that beautiful ethereal feel. I've got the rocks positioned, interestingly, along the bottom line of the rule of thirds. And I've got the camera at this level so I can then get the horizon line on the top of the rule of thirds. So it's just a beautifully balanced image from top to bottom. I've then positioned the rocks to the vertical rules of thirds, left and right. So it's balanced really nicely left and right as well. I'm then at about 22 millimeters, something like that, to give the rocks prominence in the frame, but also to give them a little bit of breathing space left to right away from the edge of the frame. So I'm just now gonna wait for a moment with the light, which is coming now, I think, and for the tide to wash out a bit, which is now, <laughs> it's a four second exposure. Again, the tripod is well cemented into the ground. F11, four seconds. I am so 100. <laughs> Let's take a look. Ah, oh, beautiful blue. Oh, I'm getting drenched now. Beautiful blue. Let's have a look. I think I can move now. The runoff of the water at that with the four second, five second exposure just looks fantastic. <laughs> well, that was exciting. Really chuffed with it. Yes, when you, like I said before, when you see these long exposures appear on the back of the screen. It's just so exciting. And it's easy to do with the six stop filter because I can still see through it with the, with the camera. So easy to compose, easy to use. Just roll that shutter speed up and you can get an image like this at the coast with a very simple six stop filter. Right, so I'm now just waiting for the sunset and the clouds starting to break up. So I'm actually feeling fairly optimistic. But as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is the perfect place to build your websites with the beautiful templates they've got. It makes it just so easy to have a website up and running literally in 10 minutes with very little technical knowledge whatsoever. By the time you put your photographs on and a little bit of your words on there. It's going to be completely unique to you and look completely beautiful. If you then want to take it a step further, you can easily set up an online store to start selling your prints and anything else you want to sell, really. I've been using it for years and I've got absolutely no complaints. They've got 24 seven custom service. So if you run into any problems, they're there to sort you out. So go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And then when you put your website together and you like what you've done, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Right, like I said, I mean, it's starting to look just beautiful behind me, isn't it, while I'm talking? And there's a dog. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very optimistic about what's gonna happen later. So it's just about finding a nice spot. I've shot these, these groins many times before, so I might just revert to that on what is only my second trip out since lockdown ended, so just nice to be out. I have photographed these groins on this channel a lot of times before, and every single time, essentially, taken the same composition, although it is proof that if you take or photograph the same location over and over and over again, the images will look very different as you can see here. So today I'm gonna to try something a little bit different. What I'm doing is looking down at these groins just over here. As you can see, I've got the 70 to 200 lens on. I just think this could be something a little bit different and something quite interesting. So what I'm doing is using the reach of this 70 to 200 and my raised position to shoot down at those groins. In the frame is literally just the groins 
and there isn't going to be any sky in it whatsoever. So I'm going to sort of fill the frame with those groins coming from the right hand bottom corner of the frame. It may end up being a 16 by 9. I have positioned myself very carefully on this walkway so I can see every groin, every piece of wood coming out of the sand in isolation so there is space between each one. So my hope to make this image have, I don't know, a sort of fine art feel is I'm going to wait for the tide to come in and wash over those groins. In addition to that, I then have the 10 stop filter on the camera this time. So it's gonna be a totally smooth image. One of those beautiful juxtapositions that I like between the static object and the moving object in a long exposure. Slightly abstract, slightly different. So now it's just a case of waiting. So yeah, let's just wait and see. Right, it is now bang on sunset, so I have switched to a six stop filter because it's got too dark for the 10. I want to stick it about 30 second exposure at f8 ISO 100. So let's go ahead and fire that. And whilst that is exposing, I've got to admit, I'm not sure this is now going to work because whilst I'm really happy with the composition and there is a little bit of pink in the sky, not too much, but a little bit. I think it's just enough to reflect. The problem I've got is that I think also whilst the tide is in exactly the right place, because the sea is so calm, it's a bit like a mirror out there. I'm not getting the big wave I need to wash over all of those groins, fill the bottom part of my frame and then wash back out again. Uh, let's, so let's take a look. I think this is the best I'm going to get to be honest tonight. I mean, the idea is sound. I like the colour. The reflections look great of the groins in that receding water. It's just not covering the bottom of the frame. I will crop off a little bit, make it possibly to a 16 by 9, but uh, yeah, just a little bit frustrating. I'm going to persevere for a few more minutes. Right, I'm interrupting the video there because that is the concept for the final image. But sadly, that was not the final image. I have used Photoshop in a fairly severe way there. This is the image I captured. And as you can see, it is just completely different. Even just with that little bit of water missing from the bottom of the frame, it just simply doesn't work. It looks more like a snapshot. But the photoshopped version is the concept I want and I know that will be possible with the right wave in the right conditions using that long exposure. So I wanted to show you kind of what I'd imagined for the image, but as ever with landscape photography, you're not gonna win every day, but it was a good exercise and I know now that's a place I'm gonna go back to yet again. And then it will be an image that I've worked hard at and I will end up very, very happy with. But I hope you have got something out of this video, a little bit more about long exposure, and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out. Mm -hmm.